Lance Stroll has opened up on the criticism towards him and the underperformance he's shown in Aston Martin, having three times fewer points than his teammate Fernando Alonso. The Canadian driver feels like the deficit between him and the two-time world champion is not nearly as big as the media is picturing it, putting himself shoulder to shoulder with one of the greatest and most experienced drivers to ever do it in the sport. But with this egotistic approach from Lance, does he hold a valid point and is this something on which he can build on to further improve his form in Aston Martin amid the latest struggles. It goes without saying that Aston Martin is in a very big deficit right now and the struggles they're facing don't seem like ones that can be fixed with a couple of upgrade packages. Although the team seems to have failed to understand the performance of the car, many have turned their criticisms towards Lance Stroll's performance and rightfully so. If you were to look at his shenanigans in China and the fact that he does not feel any pressure for his seat due to the obvious nepotism that's ravaging in Aston Martin. With the scenery set to change in the next couple of years as Honda will take over as the engine provider for Aston Martin, Lance's seat has been brought into question again given the fact that the Japanese manufacturer takes care of their own drivers and always wants to secure the best possible seat for them. In this case, that would be Tsunoda. But Lance Stroll has fired back at these critics saying that while many depict him as the worst driver compared to Alonso, if we're to look at the last couple of races we would see a different picture. When talking about this in a greater extent, the young Canadian driver went on to say, Alonso is a two-time world champion and people see him as a top driver in Formula 1, but our duels in qualifications are 4-4. The points are a little bit deceiving because sometimes one guy can have an engine failure, which sometimes differentiates differentiates the points at the end of the season. I look at my last few weekends and I think they've been strong. When I look at pace right now and speed, like I said, it's 4-4 in quality. People say he is super good and I beat him the last few weekends, so take that as you want. Still, Lance Stroll was unable to beat Vettel in the two-year stint they had together and keep in mind that the performance of the car was quite questionable to say the least because it was one of the primary reasons why Vettel considered retirement, not being able to fight at the top spots on the grid. Right now, Lance is also losing the battle to Alonso for the second year in a row, so these statements do raise a big question mark over whether he has what it takes to fight for the title of being the better driver in Aston Martin, especially given the greatness in his teammate. The little spice of disrespect is noticed in Lance's voice, but whether we like it or not, what he is saying does make sense. In the last two qualifying sessions in Imola and Monaco, Alonso was kicked out of Q1, whereas Stroll managed to score two points in Imola. However, that's not nearly enough to beat his teammate in the greater picture because we must not forget how the points stand right now. Alonso has 33 points, while Stroll sits at 11. The defeating fact for Stroll is that Suno has eight points more than him in the Drivers' Championship and is driving for a B-team Racing Bulls, who are now only 20 points behind Aston Martin in the Constructors' Championship and are threatening to present us with a fight for P5. The only reason why this hasn't happened until now is that, similar to Stroll, Ricardo is struggling to find performance out of the V-carb, but now that his contract is very likely to get extended, we might see an improved version of the Aussie driver for the remainder of 2024. Be that as it may, the situation is quite tense in Aston Martin because they have an effective issue that is not related to the driver's performance in the first place, and that is the upgrades on the car not working nearly as they are supposed to be. This is a huge setback for the team because they've seen Alonso have the worst race finish in his career, P19 in Imola, in a race in which his team brought a big upgrade package but it resulted in a car that is very unstable and hard to control in the corners. This might be one of the primary reasons why Aston Martin has been in close talks with the current technical director of Ferrari, Enrico Cardile, as Dan Fallows started to feel the heat beneath his feet increasing a lot in the past couple of weeks. The facts speak louder than words and while Stroll's argument is valid in terms of the points finish not picturing the real situation in the team, that is definitely not the issue in Aston Martin. He is just plain slower and less competitive than Alonso and the threat of him not improving further due to the fact that his father pledged that his son will have a seat 
as long as he runs the team, is a scenario in which Lance won't have to exit his comfort zone anytime soon. Sure, Honda will be asked when it comes to whether or not this duo of drivers will remain as they are because the Japanese manufacturer will come from a championship winning environment and I'm pretty sure they'll settle for nothing less. In order for this to happen, they will need two very competitive drivers and if this picture continues the way it is, then rest assured that Lawrence will have to have a couple of unpleasant talks with his son. That also happened in the past couple of days when Lawrence Stroll had a meeting with Dan Fallows and Mike Crack regarding the underperformance of the team, which is now more than likely to pose a big threat for the Silverstone-based squad rather than comparing it with the driver's performance. The facts speak louder than words and at the moment it's obvious that Aston Martin doesn't have the right platform to build their car on. And if you are Lawrence Stroll, investing a lot of money in your team and not receiving anywhere near the results you want, it's definitely something that's worth Worth firing a couple of the high profile engineers in your team for with Dan Fallows not living up to the original hype after serving the role of head of aerodynamics in Red Bull. But it's not just Lance Stroll who believes that he is stronger or at least more competitive than Alonso in the majority of the weekends in 2024. The ambassador of Aston Martin and former F1 driver Pedro De La Rosa feels like there is a burst of talent in Lance Stroll that is just a matter of time before it bursts onto the track. And when talking about the performance of the Canadian driver, Pedro said, Lance is just unreal with the amount of potential he has. When you compare him against Fernando, there are corners where Lance is quicker. He is learning a lot with Fernando, they work together very well and it is just a matter of time before we see the best Lance and a big explosion of talent. The moment he puts everything together he will be outstanding. One thing that people do not realise is how hard Lance works, how much dedication he puts into the simulator, working with the team on himself, looking at the data and improving. That is an assignment that has made me understand his potential because I see how hard he works inside the team and also how well he works with Fernando, how much they talk between them. This is something outstanding. We must not forget the fact that even the team principal of Aston Martin, Mike Crack, went on to say that the most important thing about Lance is the technical feedback he's been able to provide back to the team. But when we're looking at the upgrades from the Silverstone-based squad, it seems like this is an area in which the team has regressed the most. Obviously, whatever they put on the car doesn't seem to work, and Alonso himself admitted that the team has taken a step back and is regressing a lot when it comes to improving their car. But it's worth noting noting that if you were to look at the progress that has been made in teams like McLaren and Ferrari, it's not impossible to have that same scenario in Aston Martin, who has invested a lot in technical personnel and facilities in order to put themselves on the map. With this in mind, do you think that Lance Stroll can back up his talk on the track? And more importantly, do you think that there is any opportunity in which he can deliver the same or similar performances with Fernando Alonso? Let us know in the comments below. And once you do that, make sure to check out the video that's appearing on your screen right now.